Welcome everyone to tonight's Department of Tourism and Sport Thursday Night Live session. My name is Fiona Kelly, I'm LYIT Marketing Manager and tonight we're going to be talking about all things tourism and sport with Nicola Dunyan, Head of Department of Tourism and Sport and then later in tonight's session we're going to be joined by Dr Ken Van Sommeren and we're going to spotlight our new program, the BSC Honours and Sports and Exercise Rehabilitation. So we're going to be talking about all things tourism, all things sport across CAO, part-time postgraduate and let's get started now with Nicola Dunyan. So Nicola you're welcome to tonight's session. Thanks Fiona, thanks for having me. So we're going to talk about the five CAO programs specifically um, first of all and then we're going to be joined um, I suppose in the latter part of that conversation by Dr Ken Van Sommer to talk about the new program and then you're going to kind of catch up and show us about part-time postgrad programs. So in terms of uh, your department your tourism and sport so we're going to get started with the tourism element and we're going to go into the program the BA in culinary arts. So Nicola can you tell us a little bit about the BA program? Absolutely, yeah, Fiona. So for anybody out there maybe has that desire or, or that burning desire to maybe be a Bowdoin chef, this is the programme potentially for you. So the programme, the BA in Culinary Arts at LIT is a level seven course. We do have a one-year add-on programme for anybody that's interested in finalising it off with a level eight programme. Um, this program is a mixture, so students on the program will do both the savoury side of things and the pastry and bakery side of things, coupled with learning about you know business operations and learning about personal professional development. So it really is kind of broadly sweeping and um, giving a person exposure to what life work in the kitchen would be like. Yeah, and the program itself contains work placement, a strong work placement element across mm -hmm. the program. Yeah, that's definitely one of the unique selling points maybe of our department across the board. But right now, and, and this is the way the program's designed, in year three, semester two, so from January to May of year three of the program, students of the program would be out in a work placement working for the full term um, in a placement of their choice. We do have staff members that supervise that, um, that placement. They work with business mentors trying to ensure that the students um, get the best learning outcomes from the placement that is possible. Um, so it's a fantastic opportunity mm -hmm. for students and we get great reviews from the students in terms of what experience that provides to their learning and their education. Yeah. And I suppose something to highlight as well is the experiential piece as well. Nicola, I like get the minute um, Millennium Restaurant, Cafe Porto as well have opened yeah. and they're, they're live service elements, isn't that right? That's what's so interesting about these type of programs, Fiona. They really are situated learning and putting students into a real life environment. So you're correct when you say if you're down on our Killy Beggs campus here, um, Monday, Tuesdays, our students are servicing the staff and student canteen. On a Tuesday, we're servicing the Millennium Restaurant that can house 40 members of the public. On a Wednesday, we've got Cafe Porto, our bespoke cafe slash mini type restaurant here. So um, the public can experience a kind of a light lunch type um, experience. So it's our chefs and it's our front of house people that are servicing yeah. all these operations. So, you know, even staff and students would say like the day goes very fast here in terms yeah. of their education. Yeah, so the placement isn't even just that that piece around mm -hmm. structure placement you're very much from the minute you start in culinary arts or in our hospitality program which we'll come to next you're in the mix from the very very yeah. beginning now one thing to highlight is the placement can be done abroad isn't that right that's right so we have a number of our chefs at the moment that are actually overdoing well they, they, there's placement opportunity abroad and also an erasmus opportunity abroad so a number of our culinary arts students our third years at the moment are in france on an erasmus opportunity and um, so again a great experience you know an absolute even from a personal skills perspective it's a life-making experience for them 
Yeah, absolutely. Now, I suppose st uh, careers in chefing have very much changed. You've seen this across the board with regards to your programs that you offer, because I know you're you're uh, in programs like food innovation and you're in the area of tourism destination marketing. And then you've got your chefs like Daniel Lambert all over social media, TikTok. Yeah. It's no longer necessarily a static career in terms where whereby you would go into the restaurant or you go into the hotel environment. It now is um, like there are so many opportunities and a lot of our students are going on to become entrepreneurs in this area Excellent. of culinary arts or going into the likes of food marketing. Yeah, absolutely. So you already mentioned there the likes of Daniel Lambert, who um, definitely has been a social media sensationalist. But even just recently there, as, as recent as last week, we have a graduate, Adrian Martin, who would be also a renowned celebrity chef, who has opened a restaurant in Dublin called Wildflower Restaurant. And I don't know if you followed him on Twitter, you would see how much of a phenomenon that's been already within a week. So there is great opportunities for people. You know, you can kind of work as a head chef or a sous chef in a, in a hotel or a restaurant. But equally, there's entrepreneurial initiatives, you know, from catering companies to opening your own restaurant to, you know, even as you say, maybe working more in the food production, being a food production mm -hmm. manager, etc. So, yes, it definitely gives you those um, ingrains, those solid foundations and then allows people to, you know, I suppose, take flight in terms of where they want their career to bring them. Yeah, so the opportunities there are endless in terms of that. And I suppose one thing to highlight is the passport to travel with a culinary yeah. arts degree. You know, yeah. I once heard Tim Dewhurst, um, I suppose he, he highlighted that everybody eats, so oh, everybody exactly. needs a chef. <laughs> so yeah, um, when, you, when you take lockdown, what that has done to us, I suppose the first pe thing people were craving was to go out to restaurants or to get takeaways. So it never goes away. And even reports I've read, you know, throughout the duration of lockdown have really pointed at culinary and tourism in every pop corner of every country in the world. There is a place for a chef to work because that is the reality of the situation. And there's not many other careers that potentially could say that, you know, yeah, about absolutely. the scope is out there for them. The scope's... So that's CAO code LY317. It's a level seven bachelor degree. The top of plus one year honours degree is available at LYIT. So that would be your three plus one for your level eight honours degree. Um, placements, placements can be taken abroad and through life service lots of hands-on experiential activities and for someone who's not that way inclined culinary arts you really do sell that program because the opportunities Nicola in terms mm -hmm. of uh, progression are, are fantastic so anybody interested in culinary arts whether you're a CAO student and there are opportunities for part-time people in this space um, then do touch base with us and again if you have any questions tonight pop them into the Facebook um, live chat there as we go through we're going to keep with tourism and we're going to move now to the Bachelor of Arts in Hotel Restaurant Resort Management. In the tourism space, can you tell me a bit about this programme? Yeah, so our hotel, hotel restaurant resort management programme is very much about trying to specialise our um, students in developing skills and competencies that are required, be that to be a supervisor or a manager in medium to large size hotels, restaurants, resorts. So no more than what we just mentioned there in relation to the culinary space, the establishments that this type of individual can work with, work in is endless. So like the culinary arts, program and um, the modules for our hotel restaurant resort management program are very experiential based also so we have modules like beverage management and mixology where students are actually working in our real life bar coming up maybe with their own signature cocktails right through to maybe being taught some of the more mainstay cocktails that would be in all establishments they are taught modules like specialized restaurant operations. So we already mentioned there at the Millennium Restaurant and the service of that. Again, they're kind of knuckling down and, and finding out really how to work in that type of environment. But then in a more broad sphere, and I, I suppose it's an important point to note, they're also learning about just kind of general business topics because like with a hotel, a restaurant, a resort, an airline, a cruise ship, they're all business at the end of the day. So they need to know topics like, you know, sales, marketing, 
business ethics, staff training, development. So you are covering off interesting mm -hmm. topics like that. I suppose the main difference being to maybe a business degree is that you're getting experiential learning and anything you're learning is specific to this sector. Yeah, and again, I always find fascinating in this program, having been schools engagement officer and now in the space marketing, is that the kind of the event management, as you mentioned, the sales, the marketing, the core business elements of the yeah. degree program. And then again, opportunities for placements, again, third year, um, yeah. and can be done abroad as well. Absolutely. I recently spoke to Hotel Fiona, and this really illustrated it to me. It was a hotel not too far away from our region, and they referenced that when they done a count, they had 51 different roles within their hotel. Now, we're not talking a five star hotel there. And that proved to me maybe the scope, you know, for an individual in these type of environments. So, like you mentioned, their events coordinator, like sales and marketing, like reservations. Mm -hmm. So, in, in, in the context of a work placement, a student can determine, you know, what they would like to you know maybe find a wee bit more about because it's through the placement that they can explore and maybe realize if something's for them or not so the breadth and depth behind the roles that are in these organizations is immense yeah and again the experiential piece from the very beginning again going back to millennium restaurant cafe porto right the way then towards your structured workplace and where you're out in industry either abroad or at home allows the learner to really get the practical element of it and i suppose mm -hmm. graduate careers graduate outcomes you mentioned there one hotel 51 employment opportunities but there mm -hmm. are really amazing opportunities like can we talk about like gertz mohaltron uh, currently in dubai mm -hmm managing yeah. five, i think a five-star hotel in the palm That's district shape like a yeah. palm tree um, yeah. in dubai fantastic yeah. opportunities like or even like and again just for the people at home you know again to open, so like even today i was on to a graduate chris doherty's operations manager now at rockhill house in donegal yes. previously to that he had worked you know in other counties but again this was an opportunity for him to move back home mm -hmm. another example another donegal person a man called donald mccoy he's now household manager at Aris and Uchtaran. so again just showing the diversity that's yeah. present in the sector you know it's, it's very interested in that interesting in that regard yeah nathan gillespie in ashford castle That's as well right. is a great yeah. example he himself yeah. is an international award winner for for his own um work with ashford castle so yeah. again these are i suppose not mickey mouse rules when it comes to opportunities either nicola so and i think it's important to highlight that because sometimes perceptually in tourism and hospitality there is a perception that there it, it, can you build a career but we've seen yeah. you can Absolutely, there's great proof of that. And you speak to any hotelier in this and any general manager, they will very clearly identify, you know, that there are progression opportunities. I suppose it's just finding maybe the employer that's right for you and maybe being progressive in terms of your own development. Yeah, and again, the ability to move around. And I suppose yeah. that's the one thing, again, similar to culinary arts, hotel, restaurant, resort management allows you that opportunity to travel, the passport to travel the world, really, with a degree program like this. Because, again, going back to achieve your core business elements, but then you also have the areas like sales, marketing, event management, and all of those um, modules you'd expect to find in that space. So for anybody watching tonight, that's a level seven program, CAO code LY327. Again, a three-year level seven with the plus one top up level eight. We're now going to move towards sport, Nicola, and we're going to move toward the BSc um, honours in sports and exercise with either performance or um, with physical education. So let's yeah. talk about the programme. It's a four year level eight honours degree programme. Yeah, this is a very popular program at LYIT and um, we're very proud to have it within our department. I suppose the for the people that are listening at home, how it works. So first of all, people, everybody, you know, goes into the one common entry program for the first two years. So whether you're thinking I want to do the PE or the performance stream, everybody generically does the first two years together. And I suppose the good thing about that is it exposes the students to you know just general modules like sports 
framework, the likes of performance analysis, the likes of foundations and strength and conditioning. And I suppose it's through that exposure and through, you know, the experience of our staff working with students, they're then able to decipher whether, you know, physical education studies or performance is the route they would like to take in year three and year four of this program. Um, and then I suppose in year three and four, the modules become a wee bit more specific to the area so if it's PE you'd be doing modules like physical education adapted physical activities movement studies athletic and games adventure and aquatics whereas if you're in the performance side maybe it might be more subjects like personal fitness instruction health promotion practice or applied strength and conditioning so the modules in year three and four get more applied to PE or performance depending on which stream you choose yeah, and it's good to highlight that, I suppose, the fact that you're coming into a common entry, first two years, everybody's together, and you're all mm -hmm. sharing modules, but it's by the time you reach year three, you probably have a good idea mm -hmm. if it's a physical education which you want to go down or it's a performance route but i suppose opportunities mm -hmm. for physical education would be obvious wouldn't it PE teaching would that be correct that's yeah a lot of people that come in do aspire to do that in reality people that go on our performance stream too if, if they so wish can go on to do PE teaching afterwards also but i suppose this this particular stream gives you the teaching council requirements in terms of your modules but we've also had examples the likes of Maggie Farley, who's gone on and worked in the likes of sports development. So people on yeah. the pastry don't always just have to be kind of cornered into that zone if they don't wish to be. There's other career opportunities for them, you know, in the areas of health promotion or sports development if they so wish. Yeah, and that's great to highlight that, Nicola, as well. So you're not pigeonholed, and that's what makes mm. the degree that little bit more unique. If you were by, you maybe went straight into PE teaching, you would not necessarily have those opportunities, whereas this is quite broad, yeah. that it would allow you to diversify and go into different areas. In the performance mm. stream, what kind of careers, um, like I've seen firsthand in my own family, um, my relative studied a four-year program, and he's now doing his master's in Coventry in physiotherapy, having studied the sports and exercise with performance. So he's yeah. doing his MSc in Coventry University so plenty of opportunities really sure. in terms it's of really it's really varied no more than what we're just saying there about culinary if you think of the amount of sport mm -hmm. and organizations that are pitted throughout this country and every country in the world but um we've seen graduates from this program going on to be the likes of strength and conditioning coaches you know maybe working in general sports coaching again working in the area there's a lot of governing bodies out there maybe working in some of those governing bodies in the area of sports development there's very interesting roles out there now as you know in the likes of maybe performance analysis or mm -hmm. you know even just some so um even our you know amateur organizations now in this country have got somewhat elitist in terms of prep and yeah. their um you know athletes so it's definitely very much a hot you know hot Thank topic you. at the moment um, and certainly it's a very much a desired degree out there in the market yeah and it would be remiss not to mention the facilities at lyit and also Absolutely. a lot of students that enter sport are naturally themselves involved in sport and to mention mm -hmm. i suppose that teams element and also individual um opportunities in terms of sport that are available at lyt and lyt is strong in this space too so you get that yeah. mixture of like the facilities and access and you might mention that yourself there Absolutely. nicola about it yeah absolutely so i suppose just to give people even a feel for home there's a really experiential atmosphere so we've developed at lyt you know mous with donegal ga i know ken who's going to come online now is talking to the likes of finn harps so we really do try to work with sporting teams because that's the best way for our you know students to actually be learning and we try to pride ourselves we have two um, laboratories on campus one from maybe the more scientific side of things and the other more from a strength and conditioning perspective um, and even the sporting organization 
organizations that I mentioned, a lot of them come in externally to us, you know, for testing, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, even as recently in the last number of, you know, just before Christmas there, we purchased sleep technology. And I believe we're the first laboratory in Ireland to have that type wow. of technology. So we really do try our staff in particular, they're the drivers behind this. We try to keep abreast with the technology and the software that's out there. Um, because I suppose we have to ensure that whatever our current students are learning through that, you know, it's, it's up to speed with what's going on um, in industry at the moment. And it's so fast moving. We have to keep abreast with that. Yeah, that's amazing, Nicola. And great to hear that in terms of development. And I know personally, the staff, the team you have, both tourism and in sport, phenomenal and experts as well. And we'll be hearing from Ken um, just after now, we, I suppose, wrap up the chat um, in terms of sport. But um, one, I suppose, thing I need to highlight to anybody that's watching this evening, we have the four-year level eight, the BSC Honours in Sports and Exercise with either PE or Performance. But then also, because we're an Institute of Technology and even as we become Atlantic, Technological University, we're going to continue to offer level six, level seven programs. So, sports studies currently is a level six program, a two year higher certificate program. But for parents or young people watching this evening or teachers watching this back, the two year program does have a progression opportunity into the four year program we've just talked about, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I'm sure no parent or no student needs to hear this from me, but and I know you reiterate this quite a lot, Fiona, but it's really important in a CAO application that people keep their options open and look at both listings, level eight and level six and seven. And that's what our higher cert does for students. It offers that other listing opportunity. I suppose the way that program works, the students on that program actually study alongside our level eight students and the one thing that they have to do in advance of going into if they want to progress into year three of the honors program they do a bridging module and to be able to facilitate that but again it's 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 definitely a worthwhile program you know even if you're sitting there and you're thinking that the level eight is the program i want to apply for i would still be encouraging the people at home to fill out you know our higher certain sports studies in the other yes. listing because it's, very, it, it's it's more or less the same program with the exception of that particular bridging model that is module that has to be done in advance of going into year three of the honors program yeah and also it's a standalone award in its own right it's a two-year qualification sometimes and we meet this a lot in the in the world we're in um in schools engagement and out um at uh fairs and we meet young people who are thinking i might not be able for the four-year degree i think i might start with the two-year and then Mm -hmm. they see as they build confidence yeah i'm able to progress so to have that that backup opportunity that opportunity there with the two plus two it's a big draw Big time, yeah. And the program itself, it leads on in terms of careers into the the top up. People can exit uh, with the two year program if they wished, and they would go into where would they go if they stopped after the two years? Well, even some of those, like you know, even if you look at the likes of the GA or or likes of some of those governing bodies, there might be entry type careers for individuals like that. So, um, there's nothing precluding you know individuals getting a career in the sporting um, sector from doing a higher cert. A lot of our students from higher cert might go in and work in gyms, you know, in their in their area, etc. So there are opportunities, Fiona, you know, that are in, in existence. Yeah. Well, Nicola, I want to give you a break and um, we're going to be joined now by Dr. Dr. Ken Van Summeren. Um, You're so welcome. This is your first um, Thursday night live session with us, probably the first of many. Um, I have no doubt, Ken. And you're here to talk about a new CAO programme, a four year level eight honours degree, the BSc Honours in Sports and Exercise Rehabilitation. So let's talk about the programme. Can you tell me a bit about it? Yeah, let's. Hi, hi, Fiona. Great, great to be able to join you uh, for this evening's session. So, <clears throat> yeah, exactly as you say. So, it's a brand new four-year program, level eight, Bachelor of Science Honours degree in Sports and Exercise Rehabilitation. Um, we're really excited to be launching this this September, and I think it's one example of the innovation that we're driving in sport and exercise at LYIT at the moment. It very much complements 
the programs you've already been discussing with Nicola, particularly the sport and exercise with physical education and with performance as well. And it's probably worth just thinking a little bit about why we're committed to launching this program. And, and I'll use that then to explain a little bit more about actually what's in the program. But in the world of high performance sports, and we've touched on this already, winning margins are getting smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. The competitive standards are getting higher and higher. And so there's never been a more exciting time to work in high performance sports, ensuring athletes and players are at their greatest level of fitness, ready for training and competition and injury free. Or if they do become injured, they rehabilitate as quickly as possible. Importantly, there's never been a more significant time for us to get and keep people moving in terms of physical activity to promote physical and mental health and well-being. And this program is very much about everything along this spectrum from physical activity for health through to training for high performance sports. So the program itself really is about um, developing the knowledge and the clinical skills to be able to diagnose, manage and treat musculoskeletal injuries. So by musculoskeletal injuries, we're talking anything to do with the skeleton, the muscles, the ligaments and the tendons. So examples could range anything from a ruptured ACL in an elite athlete, and we need to get them back to match play as soon as possible, through to chronic back pain in the aging population. It's all about how we can good, bring good knowledge and clinical practice to be able to support those different populations. Yeah, and in terms of your your wealth of knowledge, Ken, when it comes to this area, and I've had the pleasure of connecting with you a number of times, but I suppose what for somebody maybe who's making choices on the CAO makes the program special or unique? Well, I I genuinely think this is an exciting and a really important time, just as I said, you know, we're 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 sort of been living through an age where healthcare has tended to make more take more of a medical and a therapeutic focus. Whereas we actually know, and there's great evidence for this, if we can get people leading healthy lifestyles, then it reduces the health burden to the economy, it improves quality of life for individuals. And from a sports perspective, we know that the biggest barrier to high performance is being ill or injured, missing training or missing competition. Everything else is almost icing on the cake or layers on the cake. But that foundation of being fit and healthy is a cr critical across the two. And it's a growing profession. And I'm sure we'll come on to this in a moment. But the demand for graduates with skills to be able to diagnose and treat, manage and rehabilitate some of these musculoskeletal injuries is definitely on the up. Mm -hmm. And again, I suppose th with that in mind, what kind of opportunities, what would be the graduate prospects from a degree in sports and exercise rehabilitation? Yeah, sure. And it is perhaps just worth touching on. You know, I think you've covered some of this with Nicola in terms of, you know, unique components of the program. But we very much focus on the experiential learning, as you can imagine, in a clinical type profession. It's really important that uh, students and learners don't just develop the knowledge, but they also have the interpersonal skills, the skills to be able to read the situation and deliver to these high professional standards as well. So learners go on a journey from building that base foundation of knowledge to very much, excuse the pun, hands-on experience. And we do this through in-house student-led clinics, we have a clinical work placement at the beginning of year four as well, and the opportunity for this clinical research project. So when they leave, they'll be coming out with great knowledge, mm -hmm. but really importantly, the professional skills to be able to work across these different populations. And many may well choose that they'd rather work with athletes or they'd rather work with the general population, or they may indeed want to work with both, but very much giving them the skills to be able to do that. Yeah, but so, what's, great, what's great about what you're saying there, Ken, though, is that practical and the clinical element and then work ready as well to be able to go into this career. 
Yeah, work, work, work ready is exactly that. Um, and it's really important that we're including professional standards within the program. Mm -hmm. So when graduates do leave us, the opportunities, you know, going back to your previous question is, you know, working with national health services through to clubs and clinics, through to sports clubs, academies, governing bodies, sports institutes, whether it be in Ireland or other countries across the globe. And some of these roles, some are similar to what you've discussed with Nicola already. So yes, there's opportunities for coaches, strength and conditioning coaches, but this program is very much focused on developing athletic therapists, sports rehabilitation practitioners, and exercise rehabilitation instructors. And there's roles for those kind of people in all of those organizations that I just mentioned there. Okay, so we have a question and um, asking Ken that if somebody wanted to find out more, it's coming from a teacher, can they make contact with you? And if they can, what's your contacts? You're going to have to share your contact now um, online with us, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. And apologies, my, my surname's not particularly straightforward, <laughs> but it, it's ken.vansomeren at lyit.ie. Alternatively, go through the website where you'll find Nicola's email address, and <laughs> if she can't answer it, she'll pass it on to me. That's so fantastic. No problem. Yeah, that's fantastic. I want to give you a break now, and then Ken, I'm going to bring you back on again. There we have it up on screen. Your email address, Ken Summerin at lyit.ie. So Nicola, I want to bring you back now, and I just want to kind of touch on as we kind of wrap up um, tonight's session on tourism and sport before we go to the questions and answers section with yourself and Ken. Part-time postgraduate programs. Can we talk a bit about what's available in tourism, what's available in sport for anybody who's watching here tonight who maybe has come through either to the CAO undergraduate system and is now maybe thinking about part-time programs or postgraduate. Yeah, I suppose just I'll answer your question in two ways. So first of all, to answer it in the context of what's imminent, i.e. what are we kind of recruiting for at the moment? So from a tourism perspective, we are actually recruiting for a program called the Certificate in Social Media and Web Performance of the Tourism Sector. Mm -hmm. It's springboard funded, but even for people that are in employment, um, it's the cost is covered, 90% of the cost covered, so the fee is €220. Euro. That programme is commencing um, on the 16th of March for induction only, and the application deadline is the 9th of March. So that's been a really popular course for us. It's the second render in this year that we've ran it, mm -hmm. um, and applications are very high in relation to this programme. So I'd encourage people at that kind of money, the outputs of the programme are really useful, and I would encourage people to, to check it out on our website or on the Springboard website. Mm -hmm. In the context of sport programs that are kind of at the moment recruiting and um, two postgrad certificates which Ken has been um, very influential in terms of leading out on so a postgrad certificate in professional skills for high performance sport and a postgrad certificate in sports performance innovation so there are the programs at the moment that we're recruiting for but in addition to that Fiona the department bodes a lot of programs that kickstart in September 2022. Mm -hmm. So just even when we are on the topic of sport, we're currently um, gathering our thoughts and putting a campaign together to recruit for our MSc in sports performance practice. So typically, you know, a lot of our students that do the performance stream in our level eight go on and do this program. But if, if there's anybody out there that has has maybe an undergraduate degree in sport or likewise maybe in a different discipline area but have been experiential work in this field yeah. a lot this particular program might be of use to the, to them and um, we're have two years of this program now underway i can again can along with you know the likes of Carl Lacey, Ronan Doherty, Maria Faulkner, they've been very influential in kind of making this program happen and the um, reports back from students on the program is excellent. Yeah, and great people, and great people through the program as well, Nicola, exactly. past graduates. Yeah. 
Absolutely, yeah. Um, and, you know, I suppose it's lovely to say even male, female alike, you know, there's yeah. a nice balance there coming through um, from individuals. And then I suppose, Fiona, with, in the tourism sector, we'd be hopeful. We've put in a few bids for springboard funding, so we'd be hopeful a number of them come true um, in relation to a September start and, you know, mm-hmm. in the area of maybe culinary and food and beverage operations. But I suppose it's a matter of watching the space at the moment and um, with further detail to be provided when we get greater clarity on, um, where, I suppose, where we've received funding for. Okay. And going forward, Nicola, is there any plans for future undergraduate, postgraduate, part-time developments that maybe viewers watching tonight would like to know more about? We definitely have big plans, Fiona, if the truth be told, but we're actually maybe kind of underway in a validation and, um, mm-hmm. you know, we're putting it through validation. So unfortunately, until we kind of get stamp of approval, I'm not, really in a posi- yeah, I'm not in a position to maybe go shouting about it. But I would definitely say in the sphere of culinary arts, and in the sphere of maybe hospitality, um, we'd like to believe that there's big things coming. Um, so I suppose fingers crossed, and it's a matter maybe of watching this space in the next yeah. you know, two to three months, Fiona. Absolutely. And just to kind of wrap up, I suppose, with yourself, as the head of Department of Tourism and Sport, what makes this department stand out to similar departments across the higher education sector? Funny, Ken and I, on a completely separate conversation, we were having, you know, a talk about this earlier today. And whilst people listening, there's, I suppose, a lot of difference between sport and tourism, but in a lot of ways, there's a lot of synergies. So, you know, the CAO programmes we've discussed tonight all represent the following. One, you know, you use the word work ready, which is a nice way of describing it, but it's kind of in that area of work-based learning. Every program in our department has that as a component um, within the program and a strong component. We're not talking, you know, we're talking at least um, one sixth of the program being dedicated to work placement. Um, Second, I would think, you know, big testament to all the programs again, which I think you've heard us talking about, is that experiential piece and on the job type training. So, you know, a lot of the facilities that are available through the department um, very much display the real life scenario. So you heard me talking about a high performance strength conditioning lab. You've heard us reference um, our bar, our Millennium Restaurant, you've heard us reference even the likes of an accommodation facility room yeah. or should learn, you know, that side of things. So all of this kind of these simulated environments create that experience for students where they really are, you know, I suppose it's like what we call it's action learning, they're learning through doing um, mm-hmm. on the module. So that's another huge component. And the last thing I'd probably finish on in that regard, and again, it was already touched on tonight, but it's that piece of our investment in our facilities and equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Because our programs need it, you know, yeah. um, our chefs need to be working with, you know, industry standard equipment and um, our sports graduates need to be using the equipment that are the reality in, you know, a very professional type sport environment now. So we totally recognize that. And we're very fortunate, I suppose, to have a head of faculty who recognizes that also. And we do as best as we can keep, you know, abreast off and try to keep up to speed with the facilities and resources that are available to both our yeah. students and, and our staff. Well, both Ken and yourself have provided a comprehensive overview of tourism and sport tonight. We're going to bring Ken back on the screen because there's a few questions in um, for both of you. But we'll start off. Let's see. Perhaps we'll look at yourself, Ken. Yeah. So this is a, this is something I suppose maybe a bit tricky, but I suppose it's a, a question I have no doubt that you'll be able to answer. What's the main difference for someone picking sports and exercise? with PE performance versus sports and exercise rehabilitation um, when making their choices? Yeah, great question. So clearly the three programs are different. Yeah. The focus and therefore, you know, the, the, the destination is different and therefore the content of the program is different. Mm-hmm. That said, and Nicola touched on this, there are plenty of people who graduate with 
degrees in physical education from LYT and other institutions that go on to work in high performance sport. Similarly, there's plenty of people that start in sports science or sports and exercise with performance that then decide to go on and transfer into PE teaching post-graduation. And I think what's really important is we keep doors open for learners and for graduates. Yeah. And it's not about making a choice at this stage and say, right, you've made your choice, you're gonna be a PE teacher, or you're gonna be a athletic therapist. It's about providing the professional skills, knowledge and standards so you can do that. But because these programs are multidisciplinary and there's such a focus on, yes, the theory and the knowledge, but also the practical skills, there's a whole host of other doors open for you as well within sports and exercise, but beyond. Yeah, and I, that's that's a very good answer. So it is, again, um, because it was a tricky question, actually. Um, and uh, Nicola, question for you. Does LYT sort the chef's work placements? So do you procure these? Or there's probably a queue at the door, is there? <laughs> no, that's, that's it, to be honest. So I suppose <laughs> it's twofold, Fiona. We have people, you know, in our region that would like, you know, us to procure, in your words, the placement. But equally, let's say if somebody's from Cork and wants okay. to maybe return back to Cork for their placement, they can source their own work placement in conjunction with their academic supervisor. So the academic yes. supervisor ensures that the placement meets, you know, the standards that's required for the learning. So it's a mixture of both, if the truth be told. The connection and all of that is the academic supervisor who works with the student um, for the placement. Yeah. And uh, Ken, another question for you, um, just as they're coming in, is there a work placement structured um, on the Sports and Exercise Rehabilitation Programme? Yeah, absolutely. And it's as with all our programs it's a key part but for yeah. the rehabilitation program it's particularly important because if people are going to qualify as athletic therapists then clearly they have to have developed and demonstrated those professional competencies so we do that in the first semester of the fourth year okay. for the rehabilitation degree um, for many of the other programs it's in the second semester of the third year but this gives us a bit more opportunity to develop some of these practical competencies and mm -hmm. skills in learners before they go out to placement. And by doing it in the final year, it does also afford them the opportunity of perhaps combining the work placement with undertaking their independent research projects as well. So rather than doing that when they're back on campus, if you like, they could be doing it out in clinic with a sports club or with the fitness club or with the clinical provider. Yeah, so you've been very clear about that kind of, again, connection with industry and the placement embedded in the programme. Um, finally then, Nicola, last question is the hospitality degree. If you wanted to do the placement abroad, does LYIT have links with employers abroad? We do, and even if you think of alumni, we have strong linkages in that regard as well. So um, very often, I suppose, because the campus for hospitality is in Killybegs, our staff are very available and accessible to students. Yeah. So they would have a lot of contacts and leads in destinations. I suppose, again, it just depends on the individual and where they're thinking of traveling. So we've had people going, going to New York, to Spain, to Malta, um, to Dubai, like you mentioned. So there's a real broad spectrum of where they can go, but equally they can stay here within our within their own region. Yeah, it's great to hear. And again, I suppose you mentioned that, and we're going to wrap up now, I suppose, um, over the next um, minute on that. But um, you mentioned, about, I suppose, that community and that sense of being able to connect with your lecturer, whether it's tourism or it's sport. And Thomas Dowling, head of Department of Computing, was with us last Thursday night, and he mentioned that in some institutions, the lecturer would have a separate door for entry, whereas at LYIT, it's very much that kind of hands-on, relatable um, uh, connection when it comes to your lecturers, no matter what module you're doing or what program. Um, mm -hmm. I want to thank both yourself 
uh, Nicola and Ken for joining us this evening, a really comprehensive overview of your department. For anybody who's watching this evening and wants to find out more, you can always visit our website, lyit.ie. Also know that we have our open day, our spring open day, taking place this Saturday on campus, hurrah, um, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it allows you to come on site, connect one-to-one -one with uh, our experienced academic team, but also to meet our student ambassadors, explore the facility. So whether you're a parent watching this evening or you're a young person or someone thinking about part-time postgraduate study, be sure to pop in to us from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday the 5th of March. We're going to be joined next week by Dr. Patty Hannigan um, for Engineers Week. And we have a series of events taking place from Monday to Friday next week um, for Engineers Week. And also we have Design, Innovation, Creativity and Enterprise event DICE taking place on Wednesday and Thursday. Thanks for joining us for tonight's Thursday Night Live session. And we'll be seeing you either on campus or online very soon.